hello everyone as we have seen in the first module we have studied the design of the loadings to be considered for the design of slab bridges okay in the second module we will be studying design of slab bridges using those loading conditions okay a deck slab bridge is the simplest type of construction adopted mostly for small bridges and culverts so in this chapter we will be studying a deck slab which is of smaller span up to 6 meter or 7 meter okay so you can see here in the next sentence the span should not exceed 8 meter for the bridge in order to to be built at minimum cost so in this module we will be studying the deck slab which are of lesser than 8 meter span okay so dead loads we will calculate according to the material what we use that is rcc right for the calculation of live load we require the wheel load to be considered on the slab and and on that wheel load on based on that load based on that wheel load we have to consider the dispersion of that load on the deck slab and based on that dispersion we will calculate the moments and shear force to calculate the dispersion of the load that is live load of the wheel on the deck slabs we have different methods available okay there are three methods that is effective width method pygods coefficient method and westergaard method to calculate the the dispersion of the live load that is the wheel load on the deck slab the first method is applicable to one way slabs which are supported on two opposite edges that is to bridges considered in this module okay so effective width method is the first method which we use for the one way slab so as we all have studied the rcc one way slab okay where the load distribution will be along the shorter span where you will be having the two supports on the shorter span but in this case in the case of the slab bridges the slab deck is supported on two the slab bridges will be supported on the two longer edges that is on one end and the other end so even though it is the one way slab the distribution is taken along the longer span along the both the ends of the deck slab in the first method that is the effective width method it is applicable to the one way slabs which are supported on the two opposite edges next the second method is used for two way slabs which are supported on all four edges so here when we have the girder bridges whenever we will be having the beams span girder beams spanning along the bridges okay the slab which is supported between the beams and which is supported from all the four sides that is two way slab we use the pygods coefficient method right so westergaard method is combination of both effective width method and pygods coefficient method wherever it is applicable so in this module in second module we will be studying effective width method where you will be having the deck slab which is smaller than 8 meters and where you will be where the slab is supported on two edges that is it is considered as one way slab so the slab is supported on two edges along the longer span so don't get confused if it is one way slab means it is supported along the shorter span so here it is supported along the longer span and the supports will be at both the ends of the deck slab here in this case we will be using effective width method to disperse the wheel load on the deck slab So we'll study that effective width method. So as we have mentioned earlier, it is applicable to one-way slab only, right? So in this method, the width of the slab over which the action of the load will be acting, uh, it is called as effective width of the dispersion, okay? And and the length of the wheel load which is dispersed along the span of your deck slab, it is called as length of dispersion. In the previous module. the dispersion width and dispersion and length calculation i have explained showing you irc 21 in irc 21 you have the effective width and depth calculations so look at the figure here now okay 
so vehicular moment is shown like this okay along the length of the bridge on both the sides footpath is shown right so this is your one way slab which is supported along the length and footpath is also supported along the length here so it is you can also call it as simply supported slab supported on two opposite edges supported on two opposite edges on this slab if i consider the wheel imprint okay the dotted line indicates the width of dispersion b effective and l effective width and length of the dispersion how it disperses on the deck slab okay load dispersion on the slab is shown in this figure slab supported on two edges so how to calculate the length of dispersion and width of dispersion so width of dispersion b effective is equal to alpha into 1 minus x by l plus b bar so these terms i have explained in the first module effective width of dispersion and length of dispersion so alpha value calculation based on the b and l that is based on the span and width of the bridge we will be calculating alpha by interpolating the values between them this also i have shown you while explaining about IRC 21 okay next length of dispersion also i have shown you there cantilever slabs is not there for your syllabus if for your syllabus it is simply supported slab which is supported on two edges and that is the one way slab supported on two edges along the span okay so we will start with one problem okay dispersion length formula is also there dispersion length is length of the tire contact plus two times the overall thickness of deck including the thickness of the bearing coat this also i have explained you in the first module while explaining the irc 21 okay so we'll take one example how to calculate the length and width of dispersion and, and how to design the deck slab we will design it completely from the beginning considering the dead load live load everything we will design it okay consider this example an rcc deck slab is to be constructed over a trapezoidal channel of 6 meter base width of the slope is 1 is to 1 laid at bed slope 0.2 meter per kilometer okay so these slopes are given to calculate the dimension of your deck slab okay to calculate the dimension of your deck slab <coughs> okay so these data are given here change is constant 60 so change is constant and all are applicable whenever you will be calculating the stream flow the water body flows no the stream flow for stream flow calculation you will use change is constant that is for computation of linear water so this is not there for your syllabus only design of the deck slab is there for your syllabus so okay so linear waterway we will take the direct value that that direct value will be given for your problem material m25 important is loading irc class aa loading road width they have given 7.5 meter total 7.5 meter and 600 mm on either side is footpath okay next after the computation of linear waterway you directly come here linear waterway they have got it as 4 meter that means width of your deck slab is 7.5 meters is road 600 mm footpath on both the sides and length of your deck slab is 4 meters this will be directly given in your problems that is length of the bridge deck slab 4 meter so using this length 4 meter and width 7.5 meter plus 600 mm on both side i will design the bridge deck slab here i will design the bridge deck slab design of the slab come to design of the slab we will start with calculation of design constants for m30 concrete and fe415 steel based on irc21 modular ratio is 10 neutral access constant is